Um, so thank you for, for joining the webinar, uh, the Think You Know Data Core webinar. Um, before we dive into the presentation presented by uh, Peter and Denny from DataCore themselves, um, just a quick recap about Exclusive Networks. Exclusive Networks is a global value added distributor. Uh, we, we have a good local presence here in Belgium, and we also uh, help out our partners in Luxembourg this way. We focus a lot on cybersecurity and cloud solutions, which include uh, storage backup and networking solutions. Data Core is one of the products uh, that's part of that cloud solutions portfolio. Um, we're a value added distributor, which means we, we try to create a lot of services around our products to, to support our, our partners. Um, one of the biggest services are our trainings. We have uh, several trainings and workshops around all those different products. Um, for a lot of them, we're also the official training center. Um, beside that, we also have installation services, worldwide logistics, and a lot of uh, leasing offers we can, we can provide you with. Uh, all these services are actually created to help out all different types of partners and try to cover a lot of multiple business angles. Um, should you have any more questions about exclusive networks or any of the services we offer, uh, please leave a ch chat message so we can talk about it later. Uh, the same goes for questions about the presentation. Um, if you have them, if you have any questions, please just leave a chat and we'll come back to them at the end um, of the webinar. Um, so for now, I'll, I'll leave you in the good hands of, of Data Core. Uh, I think first. Um, Danny, then the builders will uh, give a data core introduction. Danny, you can go ahead. Yes, Jeff, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Danny Pelders. Uh, I'm a channel manager for the Benelux region here at uh, Data Core Software. Uh, important to understand is that Data Core is a 100% channel organization. That means that our full business and our full operations is uh, is going through uh, through our distributor and uh, our business partners. Uh, my job role is basically to make sure that all our partners and all our potential new partners uh, are being fully onboarded. Uh, that means uh, a sales training, a marketing, uh, technical training, uh, basically everything that uh, uh, that enables us to grow a, a healthy and sustainable business together. Uh, so, like Jeff already said, um, we have lots of information today, uh, and, but we have only limited time. So what we uh, wanted to ask is uh, to just write down uh, any questions you might have uh, or leave them in the chat box. So after the presentation, we can do a, a Q&A together. Uh, so uh, what will we, will we be um, uh, discussing today? Uh, we have a full uh, program. Let's see if we can get the agenda. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm here with uh, my colleague Peter today. Peter uh, is our senior solution architect. Uh, so he's our uh, technical um, conscience in the region. Uh, he's going to do an introduction of, of Dedeco Software as a company. Uh, we are also talking about um, uh, three different products we have, uh, starting off with Dedeco Sense Symphony. It's our uh, software-defined solution uh, for block storage. Uh, after that, he's going to talk about Data Core Insight Services. Uh, it's our artificial intelligence uh, monitoring tool. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, he's talking about vFilo. Uh, the name already says it a little bit. It's virtualized file and object storage. Uh, he will do a live demo uh, of a failover uh, incident. And after that, we can do the, the Q&A. So with that being said, uh, thanks again to uh, to Jeff and Matthias and the Exclusive Networks organization. Uh, I think you did a great job organizing this uh, this webinar. Uh, we are really excited. Uh, hope you guys are too. Uh, that means that we did a, a good job. So, uh, Peter, the floor is yours, buddy. Peter, I think you that still Peter's still on mute. Yes. <laughs> Hi, here you go. <laughs> I thought it was unmuted by uh, by uh, exclusive. Sorry. Hello and welcome again. Uh, my name is Peter van der Berg. 
I am a senior solution architect for uh, for Datus, uh, the data core software. Uh, then he already uh, introduced the agenda, uh, so I'll uh, continue it with uh, uh, with the presentation. Small uh, introduction of uh, data core software. Who are we and why data core? Uh, data core software was founded over 20 years ago, uh, so we are considered a pioneer in uh, software defined storage, but we see ourselves as the authority on software defined storage. Our uh, first generation software product uh, was released, we released was based on storage virtualization. At the moment, that we are in our 10th generation of our software. Over time, we evolved into a true software-defined storage platform. Uh, we have over 10,000 customers worldwide. We have over 30,000 deployments worldwide across all major server and storage vendors. As a true software-defined storage vendor, we are hardware agnostic, so we can run it on any x86 uh, server, uh, so uh, we are true uh, software defined. And as then mentioned, for a partner, it is good to know we are a 100% channel centric. Uh, again, we are very proud of our world class customer service. We consistently achieve over 90% satisfaction in customer surveys. We have three support centers around the globe. One is in Fort Lauderdale, uh, where is our main office. One is in Reading, England, and one is in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, we use the follow the sun approach to provide our customers all year long 24 seven support. Uh, data core engineers uh, are all cited, uh, our support engineers. So they are very hands on it and they have absolute knowledge of, uh, of the product. And through a TSA net, we can collaborate it with other vendors like VMware when uh, we see another issue coming from VMware. So we can collaborate it with, uh, with them. And uh, there's no finger pointing who owns it, it's, uh, the, uh, the problem. We will own the problem and we will uh, supply the customer with, uh, with the solution. Uh, all major analysts like Gartner, IDC, 451 Research, and Storage Switzerland recognize Data Core as a leader and innovator in software defined storage. So, all the authorities that recognize us uh, as uh, a major player in, uh, in this industry. Uh, here you can see some customer opinions and customer reviews. You can find them on, on, uh, on our website. We consistently achieve 92% customer satisfaction. So we have a very high customer satisfaction rate and we are very proud, uh, proud of that. We have uh, reference customers in multiple industries. Here you see some examples of the it in the aerospace industry. We are also highly present in healthcare financial institu institutions. Uh, on our website, you can find many more of them. It, and it is, uh, in certain cases, we can introduce you to two restaurants customers and talk to them uh, directly. Uh, a small overview of our international references. It is, as you can see, some big names that are uh, already present uh, there. Now we'll zoom into our uh, our product portfolio. What is Data Core Sense Symphony? Uh, Data Core Sense Symphony is uh, a next generation software defined storage platform. Uh, Data Core Sense Symphony provides you primary and secondary block storage to heterogeneous environments. Uh, it abstracts multiple external and internal storage resources like storage arrays. SSDs, NVMe, or SA uh, SAS drives, and it virtualizes them into one storage pool. From this pool, virtual disk or LUNs uh, are served to external hosts. Uh, through this, the data core software defined storage platform provides an enterprise class, high performance, 
highly available and agile storage infrastructure, coupled with the lowest total cost of ownership for, uh, for your customers. Here is the concept that we see of uh, software defined storage. Uh, due to the fact we are hardware agnostic, we support every major external storage vendor, we support every x86 vendor and all major OS vendors that are supported through our software. With uh, Sensiphony Software Defined Storage, we can provide you a flexible, high available storage platform from the data center, even to your remote and branch offices. With DataCore SDS, you can deploy different topologies from a single software platform. That's very, very important. We have one software stack where you can uh, deploy multiple types of um, uh, topologies. Here you can see the choice of topologies we, uh, we support. The first option virtualizes internal and external storage resources to the host. No VMs reside on the data core server, so that we virtualize external storage or internal storage. The second option is a hyperconverged solution where all the nodes contribute local storage to each other in the cluster. And this is all done with the same software. Uh, the former topologies translate in the following deployment models. You can virtualize internal and external storage resources to the host, that's storage virtualization. You can also deploy Sense Symphony as a converged storage model. Uh, you can deploy Sense Symphony as a hyperconverged solution where all the nodes contribute the local storage, the CPU, and memory to each other. And unique, that's very unique to, uh, to data core, uh, a hybrid topology where you have a combination of all three topologies and no other uh, vendor rated is able to, uh, to do that. Uh, date, what I already said, Data Core Sense Symphony is hardware agnostic. It runs on any x86 server. There is no vendor lock-in. Uh, your environment can evolve as technology and all your needs evolve. Datacore SDS pools and virtualizes internal direct attached storage and external storage. We support scale up and scale out architectures. Our scale out architecture can uh, scale out to a maximum of 64 hosts. And a high available cluster or can start at uh, a minimum of two nodes. So you can create a very high available cluster on-prem or at it, uh, divided over two uh, uh, data centers with just two nodes. Uh, what else? Data Core and Symphony distinguishes itself to competitors through our extensive and powerful enterprise data services. That's also unique to, uh, to us. What we bring to you is, and I'll elaborate uh, on the method more of it in uh, the coming, uh, coming slides, is synchronous mirroring, snapshots, quality of service, load balancing. Those are all advanced data services we support to uh, bring you a high available, high performance storage infrastructure. The following data for uh, SDS data services will provide you always on uh, availability. Uh, we support strengthness mirror, HA in the metro cluster, continuous data protection. Of course, we support replication and advanced site recovery and snapshots. Uh, for replication and advanced site recovery, we have a VMware site recovery plugin. Uh, and we also support the R test scenarios, very important in uh, disaster recovery uh, environments. With Snapshot, we have a very comprehensive Snapshot integration towards Commvault and Veeam. And in the next slides, I will highlight synchronous mirroring and the 
uh, continuous data protection. Uh, with synchronous mirroring and data protection, we can have two or even three mirrors. So data can be in two or even three places. It is, we support synchronous mirroring it is over three uh, data centers. Uh, we support stretch metro clusters for high availability. Uh, and for your failover, uh, there's no scripting or manual intervention needed. Everything it is, is automatic without user intervention. How does that, uh, that work? This is an example of business continuity through HA clustering. Uh, this will also be shown in, uh, in the live demo. Uh, in production, uh, all hosts, as shown, are writing it to uh, both data core nodes. Uh, when we bring one node down, maybe due to uh, maintenance, all writes to this node fails over automatically to the second node. All writes are logged. Uh, when the first node is brought, brought back into production, all writes are synced back through a log recovery. When the sync is completed, an automatic fail back takes place and everything is uh, redundant uh, again. And everything is done without user intervention. Continuous data protection. Uh, some organizations have the need to restore their environments to specific point in time that may not coincide with the scheduling of the regular snapshots. So their RPO of a snapshot isn't aligned with the needed RPO of maybe to a second. Nor can they afford to interrupt or quiescize applications so frequently because it is when you do uh, a snapshot the VM has to be quiet-sized, an interruption it is, uh, is imminent at the point you quiet-size the, the VM it or, or the LAN. Uh, but the best use case for CDP is uh, recovery uh, after a ransomware attack. These threats rank high in today's electronic world. Whatever the cause of the damage was, the modification to the data or corruption it to, uh, to the data was in, in this undesirable and it needs to be undone immediately. Uh, CDP, continuous data protection, provides you the best recovery point uh, to that. Uh, CDP delivers one second granularity on rollbacks and provides with this a one second RPO to your environment. You see the, the, the RPO differences between a backup, this is usually 24 hours, a snapshot, which is typically 15 minutes to an hour, and one second RPO of CDP. In this slide, you see how CDP works. All the rights to the production volume are logged in the history log. This works like a journal. When, a bad, when bad data was written at, for example, 22.41.36 uh, p.m., uh, this is committed to the production volume, resulting in data corruption it is on the production volume. It is, so bad data was written at, uh, at that time. All data which was written before that was locked it is in the history log. Uh, through the history log, it is, we can actually go back in time to the last known root point in time, as shown it is in, uh, in our next slide. It's, uh, it actually works like a video recorder. You can wind it back to the time before the problem occurred uh, and do a rollback to that point in time. For example, it is, uh, the known root point marker Let's see if we can go back. Uh, next to uh, the high availability uh, uh, services, it is Sensifni delivers scalable 
and predictable performance through high-speed caching and uh, parallel I.O. technology. Uh, data Core Sensitivity doesn't process random I.O. serially, but in parallel. It utilizes the multi-core architecture that of the service that is in uh, your environment. Um, Sensifony uses internal memory allocated as high-speed cache. With current server architectures, cache memory can be up to 8 terabytes at the moment. Sensifony does not need dedicated SSD drives for caching like other SDS vendors. We also support uh, automatic storage tiering up to 15 years. That's also unique to our, uh, to our software. Uh, Sense Symphony uh, delivers increased storage efficiency through our storage pooling, thin provisioning, compression, and deduplication technologies. Uh, data can also be encrypted. Uh, that's data at rest uh, encryption. Unlike other solutions, we support selective enablement of dedup and encryption. It is not always on or always off like other vendors do. You can enable these features on a VDisk or LAN basis. It's an interesting fact that DataCore is the inventor of team provisioning. I didn't know that when I started with, uh, with DataCore. Uh, we hold a patent to the thin provisioning technology. Other storage vendors are using our patented technology with their uh, thin provisioning. A major feature which was available from day one is data migration. Uh, we support migration from your old storage arrays or your old storage environment to your new data board storage environment, and we do that with zero downtime. Uh, here I will be zooming in it is on our uh, management uh, capabilities uh, next to our standard management GUI, which you see here, it is, uh, and the next and webs console it is all in the next slide. We also have data core inside services. Uh, what you see here, it is, is our, it is our uh, GUI, our uh, Fed client. On the right, it is, you see our fee centered integration. In the middle, it is, you see uh, easy uh, steps it is to uh, provision storage. Uh, on the left side, if you have an overview at all of the uh, data core uh, data core servers, this is it. How our uh, web console uh, looks like. That with this, it, you can have workflows in it where you can deploy uh, storage, where you can deploy servers. But uh, the interesting software that we just uh, developed it is data core inside services uh, this is our cloud-based analytics platform with which you can gain insights of your entire data core environment uh, dis said it will bring you a single plane of management of your complete data core environment uh, data, dis uh, yeah, it's a cloud-based software as a service platform where we collect telemetry data from all our data core installations. And what we do with this uh, telemetry data, we can correlate all data and through artificial intelligence, we can do predictive analytics to get actionable insights and perform uh, proactive uh, optimization. Uh, DIS provides you with actionable insights of your environment. These are actually actual improvements which are presented to uh, the user and it's gained from information with the data core infrastructure. All DIS insights are actionable, meaning that they are delivered in an easy to use format with prescriptive remediation steps. So it takes you through how to resolve the issue or how to resolve an insight. It's not that they only give you an email at it and then you have to go back at it to, uh, to your manual at it and see how to, uh, uh, how to do the change, but it will actually help you to 
to resolve it, it's a, the problem. Uh, through our AI engine, artificial intelligence engine, uh, it can deliver predictive analytics. A DIS can identify potential issues before they occur. That's because if we know a lot of information about all our installations, all this information is uh, correlated. So that's how we can see issues before they occur, and we can uh, inform you uh, about about that. Uh, DIS also provides proactive optimization. Uh, proactive optimization helps you avoid downtime and ensure an optimal configuration. So through proactive optimization, you can create a healthy infrastructure, a healthy storage infrastructure, and you can maintain a healthy storage infrastructure. But most of all, DIS brings you a single pane of glass for your storage environment. It's through DIS that you can monitor and manage your complete data core storage environment. Uh, to get more insights in the possibilities of DIS, say that we have a guided tour for, for this. You can follow the link it to sample it how uh, DIS said it works it and how the look and feel is. So I encourage you to go to this uh, to our uh, guided tour and see the look and feel of uh, uh, our DIS software. Next, Data Core vFilo. Uh, as Sense Symphony is our virtualiz virtualization platform for block storage. Vfilo is a platform for file and object storage virtualization. These two uh, uh, products are positioned next to, to each other. In the near future, it is, uh, they will be integrated, but at the moment, it is, they are two uh, standalone products it is, which live next to each other. And the coming years, it is, we will see that how they will be uh, integrated into to each other to uh, perform high performance block storage and file and object storage virtualization through one uh, through one product. What is vFilo? Uh, Data Core vFilo is our next generation distributed file and object storage virtualization platform. Uh, vFilo is ideally suited for NAS file consolidation, cloud migration, and archiving. Uh, the product is announced last year, November 14th. Um, as I already said, it's positioned next to Sense Symphony. Uh, unlike Sense Symphony, which runs on Microsoft Windows Server, it is based on uh, on the Linux kernel. Uh, vFilo provides concurrent access to your file data through SMB, NFS, and S3 protocols from a, from a single global namespace. Uh, a global namespace acts, and what is, what is a global namespace? It acts as a single entry point for your data. Uh, a global namespace virtualizes all underlying filers, NAS filers, or object storage arrays, so users can easily find and store their files not knowing it is where those files are actually stored. Uh, Policy-based data movement brings data mobility, data tiering to your complete file and object storage infrastructure. We work with policies, actually uh, objectives. Uh, you can integrate into a multiple cloud infrastructure based on S3, and we can deliver data services like and delete and snapshots, which I'll cover it uh, in the next slides. The use case for uh, vFilo is namespace consolidation. So files can easily be found, uh, shared, and backed up. You can leverage cloud storage as a low-cost storage for archiving. So infrequently uh, used files can be migrated to, uh, to cloud or object storage. And we uh, 
can uh, deliver a scale out load balance file shares just like a scale out NAS uh, solution would. Uh, in a traditional environment, you have multiple filers, multiple entry points for your data. That makes it very, very difficult uh, to, uh, to manage. So it's very frustrating to have different filers scattered around it at your, uh, your environment. In traditional environments like, uh, like this, data is often siloed. Every filer has its own location, entry point. Every filer or object storage array has its own gateway to cloud storage. This leads to a very inefficient use of primary and cloud storage. There is no interaction between the locations, between the filers and object storage arrays. So it is also a nightmare to, uh, to manage and storage utilization is, is, is very bad. With the uh, infrastructures, unstructured data is scattered everywhere. Millions of documents, multimedia objects are spread over several filers. This makes finding files very complicated and time consuming. And of course, if for your administrators, it's very difficult to manage due to the nature of this silo storage. What we do with uh, vFilo, uh, vFilo creates a single namespace, a single entry point for all your data. A global namespace which unifies the underlying filers and it will make your life and the life of all of your administrators much easier. Uh, this is how a infrastructure around vFilo uh, looks, uh, looks like. Uh, vFilo is built around a metadata cluster to your left which is a very high available cluster which holds your metadata. Uh, the metadata cluster holds the global namespace. Uh, the data services nodes cater for the data movements. It presents the data to, uh, to the clients. And uh, cater also for the data movements. Underneath it, between the filers and object storage and into uh, to the cloud. These nodes can be scaled up and down non-destructively when needed. We can scale up to 40 nodes and scale down to one, uh, one node. The data placement that's done invisible to the clients. The clients only see the namespace, but does not know where the data is placed. The metadata cluster does know where the data is placed and through the DSX nodes, the data is serviced to the client. Uh, just like Sans Symphony, vFilo also gives you enterprise class data services. So it's a bit analog added to uh, what we do with uh, Sans Symphony. We supply encryption, deduplication, parallel, parallel I.O. through parallel NFS, replication and recovery snapshots. We have a delete. So you see that some similarity you see that between Sans Symphony and vFilo. Only Sans Symphony does it on a block level, vFilo does it all on a file or folder level. Here you can see enterprise class data services like snapshots, clones, replications, high performance through parallelization. vFilo also supports what I already said, self service and deletes. This acts a bit like a recycle bin. Uh, vFilo can optionally depress and encrypt data when it's written to the cloud. That's when you write it down to uh, S3. Uh, vFilo has a scale out architecture. Uh, vFilo is like Sans Symphony. It's also uh, hardware agnostic. It runs on any x86 server, bare metal hardware, or within a virtual uh, infrastructure. At the moment, it, we support uh, VMware and Hyper-V uh, virtual infrastructures. Uh, here is a bit of an overview of the current NAS filers and object storage arrays we natively support. Uh, more brands will, will, will follow, of course. And if a brand isn't available, uh, we also support it through a generic NFS or S3 connection. 
Uh, you can use VFILO for live migrations uh, from old technology to new technology. This is also done non-disruptively non like uh, Zen Symphony uh, with very limited downtime. Uh, there are extremely flexible workflows available for migration from NAS to NAS, NAS to NAS and objects. Uh, it works with no stubs or no symbolic links. It is like underrated archiving solutions or migrate migrations. You get stubs hidden where your files are, no stubs or symbolic links hidden are used in this. Here is a, a sample edit of a live migration. When you introduce vFilo, it's immediately live. Uh, it distributes it, it's read and write request it, it when data is available, it is through vFilo. We do the data assimilation or reading it of uh, the namespace through policies. Um, next, for administrators, it's very hard to decide when and what should be archived and consequently deleted. Uh, placing data on the correct tier will give you the best use available space and provide major savings. Uh, policies for data placement and data mobility within vFilo are called objectives. With these objectives, you can classify your data and place it on the storage tier you want. As I can show in this example, it is on the left, it is your old uh, NAS filer. On the right, it is your vFilo uh, environment. You can, through policies, it is you can place uh, your active and important files it on premium storage and globally detubed and compressed data can be migrated to low cost capacity or cloud, uh, cloud storage. As I already said, we use uh, policies or objectives in it to do the, uh, the data placement. What are policies? Yeah. Policies for data placement and data mobility are called objectives. Uh, with these objectives, you can classify data and place it on the storage tier you want. You are in control of your data. This data movement, already said that, is not visible to the client. The client doesn't know it where uh, the, uh, the file is. Uh, here is an, uh, an example of, uh, of an objective. Uh, an objective can be place a folder on a storage array with an avail availability of 99.999% with a minimal 10,000 IOPS and a snapshot of the folder on local storage for data uh, resiliency. Next, you can create an objective that when a file in that folder isn't touched for like six months, it has to be archived in the cloud. And this is a very simple objective, but you can create your objectives as needed for your, uh, for your organization. As you can see here, uh, vFilo enables you to do autonomic data placement based on performance, resiliency, cost, location, and aging criteria through objectives I stated earlier. With this, your data will always be available on the right type of storage for your customer, all done transparent to your users. A unique feature of vFilo is assimilation or reading it as your uh, metadata, uh, the catalog it of your filers, and assimilation of the metadata only. Uh, assimilate only the metadata from your NAS means that you have control over uh, this metadata, and you can perform analytics on that metadata uh, using third party tools and keep can gain greater insight into the data you have.
So Peter, sorry to uh, to interrupt you. Uh, yes. I just wanted to, to highlight uh, for uh, from a time perspective. We have around oh, yeah. ten minutes left. Okay, the time so uh, I'm ready. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll okay. be going to uh, the uh, uh, the live demo. It's in uh, yep. I think in like two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. In short, uh, metadata uh, is data about your data. Vfilo can, Vfilo can enhance, enhance this metadata by adding keywords, descriptors, and tags, like Google uh, does if it's uh, often, uh, uh, under search. Enhancements can be added manually or auto-generated by applications like Amazon Recognition. Uh, this application detects what kinds of animals appear in photos to classify the files as containing zebras, giraffes, dogs, or etc. Uh, actions can be automated based on this specific method, metadata tags. For example, gather all ze zebras and giraffe photos in my F record collection and place them in the cloud. So it's very uh, powerful to get control of your metadata, and it's all done through eFilo. I'll go to uh, the live demo uh, now. So I have to close the presentation, open my environment, see if I can. Uh, uh, Danny, if you can uh, state if. if this is uh, is visible yes it is it is okay uh this is uh my uh, lab environment it's over here it's uh, where i have two data core storage nodes uh running uh since symphony server 03 and 04. within this i created several uh, virtual disks uh, I have uh, opened it up uh, a little bit more. Here I have my hosts uh, configured. Uh, you I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oh. Peter. Just, just yeah. for all attendees, um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, send them in the in the chat box, and we will make sure we come back to uh, with an answer for that. So, sorry, Peter, I've interrupted oh, you. Okay. Please continue. Here you can see it at the integration into, into uh, the VMware uh, environments. This is the host I have uh, configured, which I uh, gave two uh, virtual disks of 500 gigs and 250 uh, 50 gigs. Uh, let's go to this is the host that it's, I. Uh, I just uh, just mentioned in this host you see the mirrored virtual disk I created with two paths to uh, uh, to the host, uh, which is active optimized, active unoptimized. So we have an active path and an inactive path. Uh, I'll start a tool which creates data to a folder it in one second uh, intervals. And let's see, where is it? Yes, here it is. This is a test folder that where data is uh, uh, getting copied uh, uh, to. I'll go back to Data core server. What I'll do now is stop this data core server. Here you see the mirrored V disk I created is down. Virtual disk it is on the other server that is still uh, still up to date. When I go back to our host, D 
data is still being copied to the volume, which is now filled over it to uh, the other node. And this takes a while. You will see in uh, a couple of seconds that this uh, path will change into active optimized. It has a, a timer in the inside. Maybe sometimes this uh, this will help. Here you can see the data still is uh, is being copied. This path, which was active before, now is offline unknown because the data core node is, is, uh, isn't available anymore. This path is active optimized right now, so it's the data path which is being, uh, being used. Uh, I'll be going back to the node. node now is start the data core server and here it says log recovery needed log recovery pending so it'll take time it is to recover all the data which was written it is to data core node 2 back to uh, uh, the original uh, node Going back to here, you can see data is still being copied. It's still going to uh, uh, to the second uh, second node. We'll be going back to MPI MPIO. Hopefully, it shows that our path is back again. It's still online, so I have to, have to wait. You can see log recovery pending, and it's writing back it. It's all data back it to. Uh, this virtual disk in my lab environment it's it's not a big environment so it's, uh, it takes uh, takes a while let's see if our path is back again Still running. Now you can see it is in uh, log recovery. Uh, this will edit, uh, this bar edit will show you that how long it will take it to, uh, to do that. It was quite, uh, quite big, quite fast. Both nodes that are uh, up to date now, so log recovery that this is finished. And as you can see, the virtual disks are uh, uh, back online. Now I go back to the host and see if our path widgets are back. Yes, it is healthy. My first path is again active optimized. The second path is active, but in failover mode. So we are back in, uh, in a healthy, healthy situation. And as you can see, data is still being copied to the, uh, to the volume. So no uh, data outage. It is or interruption it is being seen to uh, to the end user so this uh, this concludes it at the uh, the demo uh, let's see in the
chat box if there there are any questions um, I don't see any questions for the moment um, just looking at the time we have probably have a couple of minutes so if people have any questions please feel free to leave them in the chat box yeah uh, yeah we will need to conclude because the other session will be starting in a few minutes uh but what i suggest maybe is that when we send out the email if you have any question we will provide our contact details so we can discuss further if you have any specific questions